So at the moment I'm making some doors for one of my houses that I rent out and uh, they're based on these garden doors that we've got here. So we've copied this design but obviously we're using standard timber from the merchants which isn't the same stuff that this is built from. This is the first one that we've got ready to go in. You can see the similarity, these bits of wood are a bit wider, not quite the same proportions but it's the same style. And uh, this is one we're in the middle of producing at the moment. So we've produced all the frame. This is all hand cut mortise and tenons. And uh, when I was ordering the timber up, I made a small mistake. I didn't order this timber wide enough. So rather than cutting this groove out of the thicker timbers, we're just planting on these infill pieces. So these will make up the front face. This is just standard tongue and groove uh, material. Um, we'll cut the two outer pieces down so that I think it's three pieces actually that go across look at this one we've already finished yes yeah, three pieces so the, these two are reduced in width that's the full width of the original board uh, to fit them in there we, we've put a new chamfer on the edge of these to maintain this and if you look here we've just kept this gap slightly wide we were talking just now about expansion and contraction of the wood so what I've done is I've kept this gap here so as the wood moves backwards and forwards uh, it will take this gap up and if you look where I've pinned it these outer ones are only pinned on the far side and the center one is pinned in the middle so this board will grow this way around that pin staying central and these two will grow across into the center from the outer pin so these gaps will close up and expand this gap will stay constant on this side that's not going to go anywhere and we get very little movement up and down so that's not a problem uh, we'll get very little movement across that top piece um, which is why we need to allow the space for those filling in slats in there. Uh, the other thing I've done on these doors, they are through mortise and tenons but I've pinned them because I haven't got any clamps so I've basically done what's called a draw bore pin here. We've drilled a hole through the, the piece with the mortise in and then we've marked the centre on the tenon but we've drilled the hole through the tenon slightly offset so when we drive the pin in it's pulled the tenon in tight to give us these fairly tight shoulders um, and uh, hold it in place. So I haven't had to use clamps in the assembly of those doors, which um, clamps aren't cheap and I don't really want to go buying them just to do this one for that. So now that's this side and that's that side. So when we fix these, we just want to make sure that they're just slightly proud so that when we run a plane over them, we end up with nice finished timber. It doesn't matter too much about the accuracy on the inside of those. Let's just see if I can't make that just a little bit looser. Yeah, so what I've done there is when you cut something, nothing's ever going to be completely square. These aren't square and these aren't square. Mm -hmm. So I wanted this just slightly looser. So what I've done is turned it over and I've been very lucky to find that the outer square of those is the same as the outer square of this. So it's a slightly looser fit turned around. It's quite nice in here. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of glue on this and drive some pins in, and then we're going to smooth off the top. Now, on the front face, I'm not on, there for a minute. on the front face, when we put this in, we want to make sure that we get a nice joint along here. One of the lovely things about woodwork is it forgives you. You can do a, a reasonable job and it will look great. So, We'll get a little bit of movement in the wood, a little bit of expansion, a little bit of glue squeezing the hole. And then when we sand it down, some of the dust from the sanding will go in the, the bits that don't quite line up and everything will look like we knew what we were doing and cutting it really, really well. wood's got a slight bend on it so this is down just a little bit low so what I'll do is I'll just lift that up to the position I want it and clamp it there while I nail it so that I get a little piece up just above well I thought I was going to I'll just get that bit first then before I put it down the other end right I have to do that gradually so I'm going to have to kind of bend this as I go
Okay. So if we position that bit just so it's only just Prell, mm -hmm. really, really close. Okay. And then we'll knock that one in. This is a new nail. So if you feel that, you can feel it's literally just, just above the surface. And actually this one's bending the other way, so this is going to be easier. So what we do is come along there to a point that's just sticking up a bit. Because the other one was going down, we had to clamp it to hold it up. And this one's going to be easier because we can just push it down. Which I can pull it up to. I just noticed a bit more of a gap on this side than I want. Um, so when I filled this in, it's got a slight, it's cut this sort of slightly badly on this joint. So uh, I'm just trying to fill it in, make it look a little bit more like a professional carpenter did the job rather than a plumber in his back garden. That's why he said to me, just pull it a bit more off. Yeah, it's just a little bit for us to cut off with the plumbing. And then one down the middle to actually fix it. fraction too tight. Right, just because it's um, hard to hold crowd on this one, the first one was the same as this one. The second one was easy to hold up, but this one wants to bend down and uh, just trying to get that position right for my nails. The first rule of carpentry, you never put nails in your mouth. And it's the first thing all carpenters do all the time, is put nails in their mouth. So if you look at what I'm doing there, this wood is bent like this. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing it down at this end until I get to the place I want the next bit of wood to be. Mm -hmm. So that's just under flush there, so actually I'll need to lift that. And then I'll fix the piece that's in the right place with a pin. Now that bit can't move, it's got a pin in it. Yeah. And then I can move the next bit. So we're about to plane the door stop down okay and when you're planing you've got to think about the direction of the grain mm -hmm. see if you think of the grain as a bunch of straws yeah. if those straws are running up in that direction yeah. and you try and cut through you're going to rip them off yes. pull them apart if you try and slice through the tops of them that way it's going to cut okay so you need to look at the piece of wood to see if you can read the grain on it so if you look at that you can see that's quite parallel but there it's coming up mm -hmm. coming up again i would say Yes, it's, it's, it's all over the place, but generally planing in that direction that is going to be right, yeah. As you plane, what you'll notice is you'll get some tear out. When you get to the points that the fibres are pointing up, you'll have a tendency to tear out. And when you're running with them, you'll get a tendency to get nice smooth wood. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we're not going to plane down two levels, we'll use the sander. The sander will deal with all the different grains. So we're not going to use this one at all. We'll, we'll use it now to get down close, yeah. Um, so, hold it like so and the other thing is not to hold it tilted. So That's we've got the nice flat face right. here. Yeah. yeah. Um, the geometry of a plane is a bit bit wrong. A power tool plane is a little bit better. So we've got a completely flat surface here, 
with the blade protruding through the bottom, mm -hmm. which is a little bit illogical. What we should have is we should have a little joint here and the front foot on the front here uh, should be the, the amount of thickness we want to come off. So it should be lower than the blade by the amount of material we want to remove. And the back part of the sole should be level with the front edge of the blade. And that way we could run it through. Once it's cut, we'd have a perfectly parallel face to go across, but that's not how planes are built. So uh, we've got to allow for that. You'll tend to get, when you plane, you'll tend to get a curved finish mm -hmm. because of the geometry of the plane. And you've got to allow for that when doing it. But at the moment, we can use that back face to give us some kind of level. Yeah, just run it across the top. Now that's going to be sitting at an angle like that. Mm -hmm. But as each time you cut, the angle will come down. Okay. I think what we've done is we've actually set this just below. This wood had an angle on it. Yeah, the angle on the wood's that. Mm -hmm. So we're already down flush with this wood now on this angle. So we're gonna to have to kind of shape that in with the sander. That's why, right. so you can have a go at this one now. That bit there, I'm not too worried about. Yeah, yeah. But that bit there's level. I could try that again. Try this one again. So if you stop in one place, you're going to start grinding in one place. So come down. Here. I'm looking at the line there. Yeah, I've already got to the place there, but I'm not there here. I'm going along the area. Yeah, almost gone. I can see all along here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's it. Now we've got to set all the nails in. So we've got a little pin punch somewhere. I'm going to put each nail just under the, under the surface of the wood. So what we're going to do now is set the nails down. We've got the nails in, heads are showing. So we use what we call a nail punch, or some people call it a nail set. Give it a little tap, the nail goes down below the surface. Mm -hmm. And that can be filled later to show, to cover up those nail heads. And... Uh, we won't bother, this is actually the back of the door, so we won't bother filling these or disguising them, but they'll get a little bit of the uh, colour from the treatment when that goes on. Do you mind if I and sure. Yep, sure, and they'll become a little bit less obvious. Do you want to come this side because it's easier to do it when you're close to it? This has all been treated twice mm -hmm. as we've gone through the process, so we treated all the bits before we uh, did the mortise and tenons together. Um, and then once it was together, I gave it a second coat. So these pieces are new timber, these haven't been treated. And also we've done some sanding and adjustment. So we've got to treat it again now for those pieces. Um, and then we'll start cutting in the other bits while that uh, dries off. We're only really interested in treating these battens at the moment. They're the new bits. The rest of it's already been treated once and it's gonna get treated again after the next stage of the job. So if we turn that over, okay, you're in. I thought you were holding it. <laughs> How many carpenters do you think would have washing lines in their workshop? Probably a lot actually. A lot of people work from home like this. Even professional carpenters probably do a lot of their work in the back garden when they can't be on site. Right, 
Let me turn that over to that front face now. This is a wood preserver, so this will go into the fibres of the wood and it prevent water going inside. And uh, if we keep the, the moisture out, um, we stop the pro rotting process. Yeah, I mean, I can't say, I, I, I can't really, I don't really know the truth. I'm kind of, you know, it's what I think happens. It's not what I know happens, but uh, they, um, when they're doing it in a wood yard, so that the treated timber is like fences, these are put in a pressurized tank, all the wood's laid in a tank, and then there's pressure applied uh, to the tank to force the liquid into the wood. If you think about air bubbles, if you compress air, it will shrink. So you've got a certain amount of air in those fibers. If you put it in a tank and then compress the tank, the air in the wood will get smaller and it will draw the chemical in and soak into the wood. And I guess the air comes back out and so release the pressure, but that's how they force it in. Okay, so that's, uh, that's all treated. So that's, can you just pop that back inside for me? And also, at the top of this, there's going to be a tendency for water to run down the top of the door. We don't want it to go in the end grain. The end grain's really good at absorbing the moisture. So we're going to put a little bit of a chamfer on the end of that when we put it in place. So as the rain runs down, it'll hit the chamfer and have a tendency to run onto the front of the door. And we'll also make sure we get loads and loads of treatment into that end grain, trying to, trying to protect that as much as possible. Now, for this layout, three of these boards if you put them together you can see are much wider than the got your ending yeah okay so that's two we do that with the third board now right can you see what we've done wrong can you see there's a mistake Two of these boards are the wrong way round, or one of them's the wrong way round, yeah, and the whole. So yeah. So if you have a look at it, there's no chamfer on this side. Okay, so there's a chamfer for that side. So actually, this one needs to spin round that way. Okay. Now you can see the error on the other one. So we need to do the same with that one. Okay. They're all the right way round now. Now that's too wide to go into that frame. Plus, as I explained on the other bit, we need the gap here. So we need to measure how much too wide it is, and we need to cut half of that off of each of the end ones, plus the size of the gap. Now we don't want to include this rib, so we want to get to get this central. We want to go from the end of that chamfer to the end of that chamfer. So if we measure that, our gap is 363. Chamfer to chamfer is 394. Now, we've got the angle of the dangle going on here as well. Because this wood isn't sitting straight, that won't give us a true measurement. Let's see if we can straighten that up. There's some kind of twist in there. The three three nine five. I'll make that. Right, this piece isn't going to be seen, so we can put some notes here. Yeah, and then this piece was three six two. So uh, three six two, two from five is three. Six from nine is three. Three from three is zero. So thirty three plus the tongue. So the tongue's got to come off. And then we've got to remove 33 millimetres and we want to move half from each side. So that's going to be 15, 16.5 from each side. Plus we want the gap in the middle, which we're going to make a couple of millimetres. You say we're going to make that gap two, two millimetres. That's going to be another four. So that's two aside, so 18.5 off of each side. side. 
When you're using a tape measure, this little piece on the end here, mm -hmm. can you see it moves? Yeah. Do you know why? No. If I'm pushing that this way, yeah. it's going to set the zero to, the to that point. Mm -hmm. Now that's got some thickness to it and it moves by exactly the thickness of that end piece. So when I do it that way and I pull it that way, it now sets a zero from the inside edge of that tape. Okay, but still I don't trust it. So if I put it on there, I don't accept that zero. I'd rather look by eye. So if I move it to the first hundred, yeah, and then I know I want to remove 18 and a half mil. So I'm gonna go along by eye and put a mark at 18 and a half, just there, okay? Now the other 18 and a half this way was not including the toe. So we line up our 100 there, come in 18 and a half, and make a mark. So they're the marks we're going to cut to. Okay. So this time we're going to cut off this amount of material and it's also going to remove the material, the thickness of the blade. Mm -hmm. So we've got to actually make sure that this side of the blade is cutting along the line that we want if we're going to cut it this direction or we've got to set the saw up that wide and cut through the other direction. So the benefit of cutting the smaller piece off is if we wander we're going to leave more material on. If we do it the other way and we wander, we're going to take material off that we want. So it's safer to remove the material we don't want. So if we measure that, we are going to remove 19 mil. Now that mark was on the 18 and a half, so it's actually one, two. So 18 and a half. Yeah, that's right, 18 and a half is what we measured. So here again, we want to go, we want to be safe. So we'll measure this a little bit short of what we want. So I'm setting that to 18. We can always take a little bit more off with a plane. And also if we leave a little bit too much on, it's not really a big problem. So, um, but we don't want to leave it to take too much off. So the next stage of the job, when they plane the timber through, we get something called snipe. So on the end of the board, you'll see a little scallop through. We've actually just done two of these, but it was very clear on the centre board, the scallop was, was very clear. Um, but um, we've still got to trim these off the ends anyway. So we're just going to trim this end off and then we'll do the chamfers and get them all back together. So let's just trim that off. down at the end to pretend that I was wearing them while I was doing the job. This is the 45 chamfer that I spoke of earlier. And the idea of this is we're just going to use this to throw the rainwater off the front of the door. These are actually going to have to be planed down thinner as well because this is all standard stock timber dimensions of the job we've done haven't worked out quite right and this wood will actually stick proud of the door so we'll have to reduce the thickness to make sure that these faces are level so that will be a, a later stage but there we go we've got a nice chamfer on that one that can go so i'm just putting the chamfer now on the edge of the board where we've cut the board to width they had the original detail of a chamfer we've lost that i'm just popping it back on with a little block plane this block plane is quite interesting. This is a real cheap and nasty block plane. The cheapest one I could find, I think, on um, eBay. 
and when it arrived it was really bad it wouldn't work and uh, I actually filed I don't know probably half a millimeter off the bottom of this and I've altered the angle on it to get the, the adjustable plate level I also had to file a lump off the top of the front sole there uh, to get that to fit and I had to fettle in all of the faces but actually I paid nothing for this and it's actually turned out into a good tool it did take me a few hours to make it work but um, as you can see now it's doing a good job and uh, I don't see that a, a 100 or 200 pound block plane would do any better than my really cheap one that I've done up myself it seems I've never used a really, really expensive one. Who knows? <laughs> now, when you first cut, there's almost nothing coming off of there. But obviously, as you cut again and again and again, the cut gets wider to the point you can actually feel you're doing something. But you have actually just taken away the corner there. Yeah, now you can see, you actually see your cut, yep, it's only the second pass. There's nothing going to break at the end because you're running in line with the grain. Okay, so We've planed these down to thickness now to, to make them match into the door. So basically these are sitting flush with the, the face of the door. And we've chamfered the top so that the rainwater, if it's running down, will be uh, shed off the front of that. And it's now time to treat them all. So we're just about to cover them with some uh, preservative. And the important part of this is to get the preservative into the groove and into the faces where we're not going to have access once the door's assembled. Once the whole thing's put together, it'll get another treatment. So it's going to get treated and treated and treated. And hopefully that's going to make it last and last and last. We will see. The end grain here, very, very important. This really, really, I want to get this uh, really well treated on the end. This is going to be the top of the door and it's going to be very prone to the water getting into this. So um, make sure those are given several treatments. And of course, once the door's assembled, every time we treat the door, that front edge will be exposed to the two treatments as well. So. and tight at the top. Right, bit of mallet and some pins and a hammer. Now if we get these tight against the sides and pin them at the side of the door, that's where they will move from. Same at the bottom. Hold it tight. Okay, and one in the middle, so you can locate the middle style from the um, mm -hmm. from the pegs, so you can see where those are.
Right, let me do the same the opposite side. Okay, now all we need to do is set the middle one in the middle. So if you look at this gap, we're trying to make the gap look even, even there. Looks about right. And we drive one nail through the very center of that board. I haven't trimmed the bottom of this door off yet, so this one's been trimmed, which is what makes a difference in the height. So later this week, these doors will be fitted. They're going into uh, another one of my rental properties, and uh, there's going to be a four of them in total, and they are on a kind of a shed at the back of one of the buildings. This wall timber here is ready to form the framework so we've got the center piece that way around and these will form the ends of the frame but actually where I've laid them out here with only two doors there'll actually be, be two doors between each section and I don't know where my head still stuck is so in effect this won't be there this will be on that end and two doors will line up like that and there'll be a second opening with another two doors in this way so, so the doors will be the right height up down and you take it up so uh, and that's it really um, no point in showing you make a pillar too we might do a video later of, um, of actually building the frame and fitting the first two um, other than that so i hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to click the like button and please subscribe to my channel um, and i look forward to making the next video